I started DJing since 1987, July 87, and so that's about 25 plus years. Um, I started losing vision in August, and the vision was getting worse and worse and worse. The Bruno Strong shit is to just make a statement that I am strong and I feel great and I am trying to be happy as much as I can. I'm not going to let Daya or my BBs beat me, you know? I'm going to take control of it and that's why I'm strong. I've been here 44, 44 years, and I don't plan on leaving at all. You know, um, a lot of people have told me, why don't you move to New York? And I'm like, why? You know, I mean, New, New York City has got its own thing. You know, I want to help create Boston's own thing here. You know, Boston's got a lot of people who love who love, who love house, and what they need to be is exposed. That's all. He's the legend, and there will never, ever be another DJ Bruno in Boston, ever. ever. Bruno goes way back with me, and happy birthday. I am so proud of you. You are such an awesome individual. Your soul just shines. I am so happy that Bruno is back on the turntables, and I knew he wasn't gonna, like, you know, stop DJing, I believed in him. But now he's lost, like, his ability to see, right? But it's almost like he's paying more attention to the other things. It's actually amazing to hear him playing tonight. I, I, it's, I think he's actually, you know, in a way, it's almost like, uh, it's like the best set I've ever heard him play. Yeah, I wish, <laughs> I wish I was dis discovered. Um, I don't, think I was ever discovered at all. It's just been a constant struggle. You know, I mean, when I first started, started out um, spinning, I came to the conclusion that if you want to last, especially in the city, you got to be versatile. You got to play everything. You know, everybody assumed because I was uh, black, I would only play rap. You know, but they didn't know that I played everything, and I like, om I like almost everything except for country. You know, but other than that, you know, I played every everything. But if they asked me to play a country song, I would play it. If it made this, if it made a, a person happy, if it made them smile, and if it made them dance, I'll play it. As a DJ, and you know, you really want to make sure you have that passion, that happiness, that love, to really bring out from the turntables to the speakers out to the dance floor. You know, a DJ's job and what Bruno has been doing for over 20 years is to keep people dancing. It's to keep people, whether you have a bad week, good week, you know, stressful, happy, sad, whatever. He, at the end of the night when we walk out of this club, puts a smile on our face. And we look forward to the next time dancing with him. It was this girl that I had liked, and she brought me to this house club, you know, deviate, and, and, and you know, I, I thought the music sucked, but I thought the crowd was amazing, because pe pe people were just free. It was freedom in there. People were free to do whatever that they want wanted men to do. See, that is why I think it is called house because what type of what type of people live inside of a house, a family. That's the type of atmosphere that it like brings. A family a family vibe. Right. Um, but the fact that he came back after his diagnosis of, of diabetes shows that you know a, di uh, a diagnosis does not stop anything. A diagnosis does not mean you can't do something. Right? He's a fighter. Absolutely, right? Yeah. And an inspiration, you know, the people that you know 
he just had to stop doing what he loves because of this diagnosis, right? And because of his uh, blindness. I was diagnosed with diabetes in July 31st of 1999. Uh, it's been a constant struggle ever since. Uh, I had an operation on my left eye in October. And um, I completely lost vision on my left eye. And then um, they told me that they have to operate on my right eye if I want to save any kind of vision. And they can't guarantee that I would be able to see again. So um, I kind of like gave up. You know, I said, well, if this is how it's going to be, this, this is how it's going to be. I stopped listening to many music all together after the, retire the retirement party. I said, fuck it, I'm, I'm done. I, I was going to sell all of, my, all of my record collection of 30,000 records. And uh, I said, fuck it, I don't care anymore. Uh, between January and March, I was completely blind. And then um, the, those were literally the darkest times in my life. I was having panic attacks that were the worst ever. The worst. I wouldn't wish them on anybody. It was the worst time of my life. Uh, my evening was wonderful because I've known Bruno for many years, and this is one of the best sets I've ever heard him play. Yeah. So how excited are you about hearing him play again? I'm a Bostonian, so this is very excited for me. Absolutely. <laughs> on the floor, I miss, I miss him. It's Benny. He's, he's amazing. He's just a, he's a legend. The Mass Commission of the Blind has sent someone who signed me up for the Carroll Center of the Blind Men in Newton. And they gave me strength, courage, wisdom, patience. And the funny thing is, um, Memorial Day weekend, there was a uh, thing here, a party here. And I came. I was just hanging out, chilling. And I was talking to a friend of mine about the Carroll Center for the blind. I walked over to the um, booth, asked the DJ if I could play a couple, a couple of songs. A couple of songs turned into a half an hour. And I was like, wow, I miss, miss this a lot. So, and the rest brings us here. I'm out of retire retirement. I'm only like 22. So like when Bruno, came, when Bruno came out a long time ago, I was like too young. And I'm like 16 hearing about Bruno. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm too young to go. I turned 21, I heard he retired. I was like, <laughs> that, yeah, that sucked. I was like, dang. And then the fact that he came back is amazing. So thank you for coming back, Bruno. But he still got it. I mean, still got it, you know, yeah. so. And you see how beloved he is, right? In yeah. terms of like all the, the Godfather. I, yes, absolutely, right? Of of Boston house music, right? You know how, uh, like how, a chef says, um, so and so grew up on my uh, my food. I feel like a lot of people have grown up on my like uh, spinning at the clubs. You know, it's it's just weird. You know, I. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a bunch of people that I haven't seen in years. And they were college uh, students and they're like married now with kids and everything. And they're like, yo, I used to go and see you at this club and that club. I'm like, wow, thanks for giving me more and more gray hair. It's love, yeah. Can describe it? It's love, that, that's, yes, love. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's the universe, it's love. You know, the Cal Center for the Blind taught me that blindness is a adjustment. And with it being an adjustment, you know, that doesn't mean that you have to give up living. You have to enjoy your, your life to the fullest. And DJing is one of the things that I really love. And I'm not gonna quit. My 
my reading, hearing is crazy. I can hear things. I can hear things in songs that I never heard uh, before. It's weird. I am hearing certain sounds in songs or certain instruments in songs that I never even heard before. And I'm like, wow, that's scary. What it was, it was weird. I, I just couldn't sleep. I woke up my wife and said, I, I gotta tell my um, story. I don't know why. And I woke up at like 5, 30, 5 13 in the morning and I started typing. And that's what came out. That's what I put up on face, Facebook. And the response was overwhelming. I wasn't shocked. It wasn't until I accepted everything that my vision just started getting better.